So now we're going to calculate the volume of this cone using cylindrical shells. Okay. So now what I want you to imagine for a moment is, is that we're looking at the cone standing up like this. Now again, it doesn't have to be this way. Okay. But this is the way I'm going to do it. Okay. Well, not like this because that would be a triangle. Right. We have to imagine it has like some like circular uh, uh, shape. What I want you to imagine now is that I draw this vertical line through the middle of it like this. Aha. At any radius, let's say, let's say I take this radius of like x away from the center. See, it'll be cylindrically symmetric. That height will be the same as the height if I go the same distance to the left. That's the cylindrical symmetry of this of this solid shape. And that's what's going to inspire us to figure out how we're going to set this up as a cylindrical shells problem. I'm going to let this be my y-axis. I'm going to let this be my x-axis. And then what do I see? I see that, aha, at the bottom, it's going to need to go 2 to the right. So it'll cross here at 2, um, right? And at the top, it's going to be on the y-axis, but it's going to have gone up 9, right? So it'll be here at 9. So that means that if I draw this line, oops, okay, the the cone will be the 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 rotation around the y-axis of this function of this line, whatever it is, between these two x values, x equals zero, all the way to two. Now, what is this line? Well, so here. It's going to be the line through the points 0, 9, and um, 2, 0. Okay. Now, the first thing we're going to do to find that line is we're going to calculate the slope. M equals... Where's my pen? Sorry about that. So where we left off was we were trying to find out what is the equation of this line, right? So now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the slope of this line. How do we do that? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1 equals, let's say this is Y2. Y2 minus Y1 will be 0 minus 9 divided by x2 minus x1, which will be 2 minus 0. And if you notice, this will be negative 9 divided by 2. You can see here that the y-intercept is 9. So we can write this equation as y equals to um, negative 9 over 2x plus 9. Okay? So this is going to be our f of x on this thing. Okay? So let me erase that construction or how we got that, but I wanted to do that for you so you guys could see how to do it, okay? Which, of course, I know you all know how to do it, but, you know, I wanted to make sure you guys saw it explicitly here. So f of x equals negative 9 over 2x plus 9. So now here, we have f of x equals to negative 9 over 2x plus 9, okay? And now we remember, what is our cylindrical shells formula? The cylindrical shells formula for the volume is going to be from a to b of 2 pi times the r of x times the f of x times the d of x. Remembering that the r of x is the radius of that particular sheet located at at x from the axis of rotation and where the f of x will be the height of that sheet uh, will be the height of the sheet basically okay so for example in this particular case you can see here that since we're rotating it about the y-axis and let's say we're going from x equals 0 to 2 which is exactly what we're actually doing here um, we know that, let's say this is 0, let's say that this is x uh, for some value of x. You can see that will be the radius 
of the of the of the sheet from the axis of rotation because again we're rotating it about the y-axis and that will also be the location where we're going to evaluate the f of x to get the height of that sheet you can see that and so we can replace this one we're going to integrate it from 0 to 2 2 2 times pi times my r of x my r of x in this case will just be x my f of x will be this which will be this expression negative 9 over 2x plus 9 and then d of x okay so now we can start to simplify this algebraically first of all i can distribute this x into it and i can factor out a 9 i can factor out this 2 this pi so i'm going to get uh, let me see here 18 pi integral 0 to 2 open parentheses negative 1 half x squared why because x times x is x squared the 1 half stays the negative stays and then I pulled out this 9 so this 9 times 2 times 5 became the 18 pi this 9 is gone because I pulled it out right x times 9 I mean x times the 1 that remains is plus x like this okay. mm, let me see do I want to make sure okay and then this will be the x okay let me just make sure that you guys see exactly what I did there because I think I might have like um, done a few too many mysterious steps there or skip steps there and I don't want you guys to to like see step skip in a problem that's like this okay so 2 pi x times negative 9 over 2 x plus 9 I can distribute this x in I get 2 pi and negative 9 over 2 x squared plus 9 x see I distributed I held out the 2 pi and I distributed just the x inside like this okay notice they both have a 9 so I can pull out the 9 if I pull out the 9 and I multiply it with this 2 I get 18 pi negative 1 half x squared plus x like this you see and now you can see how this is exactly that. And the 18 pi pulled out. Why? Because whenever I'm integrating, right? Let me show you that here. So if I have the integral of a constant times a function like this, this will be the same thing as the constant times the integral of that function. Okay? So I pulled I can pull out a constant. Okay. So now here, I can actually perform this integral. We remember the power law. The integral of x to the n power is equal to 1 over n plus 1 times the integral, I mean, I'm sorry, times the x raised to the n plus 1 power plus some integration constant c, okay? So now here, when I integrate, and of course, let me also make a note here that the integral of a sum of two functions like this is equal to the integral of the first one plus the integral of the second one okay okay so this can be written as 18 pi times now if i look at this one the x squared the integral of that is going to be x to the third over three that three on the bottom will multiply with this two so it'll become minus one over six x cubed plus the integral of x is going to be x squared over 2 okay so 1 half x squared and it's going to be evaluated from 0 to 2 okay okay so now what I want you guys to see is the following okay okay so I now have I'm going to start this over here so 18 pi times, open bracket, I'm going to evaluate it at the top. It's going to be negative 1 over 6 times 2 to the third power plus 1 half times 2 to the square power, right, minus, now look at this expression. If I plug in a 0 into this expression, that x will become a 0. So this part, boop, gone. This x will also be a 0, boop, gone. So when I, so when I insert the zero into the expression, it all turns into zero. Now I can start simplifying this. This is 18 pi times what? 
what's 2 cubed? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So this becomes negative 8 over 6. Okay? Plus 2 times 2 is 4 divided by 2 is 2. Right? Yes. Now, I need to combine these two. Okay, how do I do that? Well, I know that negative 8 over 6 plus 2 can be rewritten as negative uh, 8 over 6 plus, I think to myself, what is 6 times 2? 12. So it's 12 over 6. You see? Because, of course, if I do 12 divided by 6, I get 2. So this is exactly the same as that. But the key difference is that here I have the same denominator. What's negative 8 plus 12? That's positive 4. So this becomes 4 over 6, like this. Right? And of course, I can rewrite this as 2 over 3. Right? So that is this. So I can rewrite this as 18 pi times 2 over 3. 18 times 2 is 36. 36 divided by 3 is 12. And so I end up with, again, 12 pi. Okay? And so, what did this show us? This shows us that we can use this in a nuclear shell method also to solve this problem. And it gives us exactly the answer we were expecting to get for the volume of this particular cone. I hope that you've enjoyed this example. And um, you know, we're going to work out some more careful examples like this uh, in a few moments.